Today we're making vintage Easter DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. The first project is a chick cup floral. We're going to start off with some Dollar Tree daisies. I have some ranunculus and some little greenery picks. This is a pick that I took off something else and a scrap of beautiful ribbon. Little cup that I got from the thrift store. I thought this was a beautiful cup and it was all by itself. It was screaming for a project. I'm going to use a floral cone or a foam cone. I'm gonna use this little Timu chick ornament. Two small doilies. These are paper and some school glue. I'm going to start by choosing the front and the back of the project. So this has a chip, we'll put it to the back. We're going to take that little knife from Dollar Tree and we're going to trim down this so that it will fit the right size into the cup. We want it to look like this. If you have a straight sided cup, you can use just a plain old block or a plain old pool noodle in there. This fits nicely and it doesn't extend over the top. So I'm going to add some Gorilla Glue to the sides. And then it's very easy to just press this down and it's going to kind of push the glue down and sandwich it between the walls of the cup and the foam. It'll hold it in place nicely. And just for a little extra assurance, I'm going to add a little hot glue right around the edge as well. I'll take my broken school glue top and I'm just going to put this all around my doily. A little bit on the edges and definitely some in the middle. You can leave a little gap in there because we're going to need to put a stick in later. I'm carefully lining this up so I can still see through the little lace cut out. Press that all down so you got no lumps. Then we're going to trim down our beautiful flowers. So I'm just going to cut off the little pieces that we don't need. I'll be getting rid of the greenery on these daisies because I, they look kind of cheapy. I don't like it. Then we'll start with these floral picks. I mean these uh, greenery picks. I only have three. So I'm going to make them into six pieces. I'm going to cut them kind of short there, going toward the end, and we'll have enough to make a little triangle arrangement in here. So we'll bend it down and then push it into the foam so that it's almost laying flat with the cup, the top of the cup. Just like this, bend it kind of down or flat. And you can see that we've created sort of an upside down triangle form here with these pieces. Then we're going to take the thinner pieces and we'll put those on the top. They're a little bit longer. We're just going to kind of put those in the little gaps between where we've already put down some greenery. Love the color of these. Love that they're on wire picks. Very easy to use. You can get your greenery from Dollar Tree. I think Ferns would be really pretty in this project. Definitely pretty in Victorian things, uh, just my opinion. And now we have the base of our floral arrangement. We're gonna start by adding the beautiful roses right down in the center. You can see already the shape that is beginning to form here. And that's the idea. Now we're gonna step these down, cut your pieces where you need to cut them. However, you know, much length you need, leave it on there, cut off when you need to make it shorter. And you can see that it's sort of a little step down here. We're going to leave this cl cluster of three in the middle. Then I'm going to take the individual pieces and make sure that we are going, kind of making a line from the top of the tallest flower to the widest part of the greenery below. And that's going to give us our shape. If you didn't get what I was saying, don't worry, just watch what I'm doing and you'll see. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue to add these in until I use as much as I would like. You can put them in groups of twos, you can put them in groups of three, whatever looks best to you. It's about what brings you joy, right? So the daisies now, I'm gonna take those and we're gonna go between and around the pink flowers. If you have flowers that are out of shape, you can use a little bit of heat on them, turn them upside down, flatten them out on the table, and just add a little heat, and they'll iron straight out. They'll just press the little 
mishaps all out. This particular piece of daisy has two on the pick. I want to make sure that I continue my shape by putting the tallest one toward the center and then it makes a little step almost down. See how that works? Same here, the tallest one's gonna go toward the center and the shorter one will go down. That's gonna help us keep that shape, which is exactly the shape I'm going for in this arrangement. And in most of my tiny arrangements, I think I do the same thing. I'm gonna continue around until I use as many as I want and I did use the entire pick to do this. This is what we have so far. So I pick it up and look to make sure that I have some balance in my project and that I have filled everything out. I don't want holes in there anywhere, but I also don't want to just be sticking things in there that don't make sense. I want it to have some type of a story. So that's what's going on in this little project. Since my foam was white, rather than painting it and having to wait on all that, I just took the greenery off of the thrifted flowers and I'm just going to glue them down around the edge of the foam so that they overhang the cup a little bit. It's going to make it look fuller and it will be green rather than white. Just makes it look a little more realistic in my opinion. But if you got green foam, go ahead and use that. I'm just going to continue around until I get as much coverage as I want there. And I like the look of this. Pretty little arrangement. So now we're going to start making our pick. We're going to take that pretty little, is this a duck or a chick? You can't be sure. I think it's a little chicken. Who knows? Either way, it's a bird. And that's what I wanted to use in these projects. So that's what we're going to be using. So I'm just going to open up a little bit where I had a gap and stick a little popsicle stick. This is a real thin popsicle stick. I got a bag of these. I guess they're craft sticks. Um, maybe sucker lollipop sticks. I don't know. I uh, thrifted them so they were not in, they were just in a Ziploc bag. Don't know really where you could get them. And then I'm going to just put a little piece of paper over it where I hot glue it in. Once it's cool so it's not moving around, I'm going to place it down in my arrangement where I like it. And I like to just put like the edge of a pick down in there so that you can still see the picture. I don't want it to be submerged completely in there. Then I'm going to take a little lacy looking ribbon. And uh, you can find really pretty ribbon at Dollar Tree. Um, I've always had luck at every Dollar Tree I've gone to, they've had lots and lots of ribbon options. So be sure that you check out the ribbons and see what you like, or you don't have to put anything on the cup if you don't want to. But I know that um, with my history of doing projects that are sort of retro or vintage, there's a lot going on, especially on the Victorian, you know, style things. And, and that's kind of what I wanted this to be reminiscent of. And I think I, I think I hit the mark here with the colors and things. You know, you let me know what you think, but um, I certainly like the project and it does look vintage to me. It also looks like something that would be super special to gift to a friend or a family member or somebody in a nursing home who doesn't have a lot of space that maybe could um, use a little brightening of their day. Great little idea for that. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this scrap of ribbon. This is about two feet of ribbon if I had to guess, but you don't need that much. I've used this in other projects that I am, I love this ribbon. I'm sad to see it go. I may have another roll hidden somewhere, not sure. Just a really simple bow here tied in the center. And then I'm gonna measure it against the side of the cup to see how much I need to cut off. And this will be a little dovetail. You can do your bow any way you want to. And again, if you like something simpler, more of a farmhouse look with not so much going on, you don't have to add the lace. You don't have to add the bow. But to be true to my little vintagey heart, I thought that this would be the perfect solution. A little bit of my own, a little bit of inspired vintage. What do you think about that? I really love this one. Super cute. So who would you give this to? If you made this as a gift, who would you give it to? You think of a special aunt or sister, maybe your grandmother, maybe mom. The next project is going to be a chick swag. We're gonna use pipe cleaners, mesh and burlap. Some greenery, 
whatever you like. I love these big picks. They were actually from Christmas. And then I've got some baby's breath, some little random clips, some Dollar Tree florals. And these were thrifted. And then some willow and some little flyaways. This is a pick from a Dollar Tree sign. It is 18 inches long. I always like to save the yard pick sticks. And then this cute little um, Easter greeting sign. Now I got this after thrift store, but thrift it if you want to. You can definitely get it from Hobby Lobby. If you can get it 40% off right now, that would be great. So I was tickled to death when I saw that just that paper was not actually cut. It was just pushed into the hole. So I just pushed the paper back out so I didn't have to use any type of, you know, putty or anything to fill the hole in. Just with a little hot glue in the back, it just popped it right back into place like it never was punched out. And I cannot tell you how happy those little things make me. They bring me a lot of joy. Look at that. You can barely even tell. All right, so let's prepare this steak here. I'm going to take one pipe cleaner and go about an inch from the end and I'm just approximating the inch. I'm gonna wrap it so that it's in the center and you can lock it in with a little bit of glue. If you wrap it tight enough though, you won't have to do this, but strictly up to you. So I'll show you how to do it with the glue if you're concerned. Not everybody has the strength in their hands. So you can use a little glue to help you. We're gonna go about four inches down and then we're going to make our next one. Now this one is going to be off to the side. Then we'll put another one right butted up next to it and twist it off to the other side. It only takes a few twists and they'll stay right there. Use your glue, add a little glue there and hold it into place. The next one is going to be in the center. We're gonna alternate back and forth. So we did one in the center and then two and then one. And here we are back at the two. Four inch segments going down. Okay, and then the last one down here it's just going to be a single one, just like the single one on the top. And this is what your pick will look like. Four inches, four inches. Get them spaced out nicely. I'm going to use some of this deco mesh. Use whatever you like. Whatever kind of deco mesh you have, you can use here. I like this white. It came from the thrift store. Point that little bunch downward. You're going to take about an inch and a half of that unraveled stuff. Point it toward the inside so you won't see it. And then we're going to go to 16 inches here. Is it 16 inches? You'll have to go back and look at that. I can't quite recall. This might have been 12 inches. I don't want to get you confused. Just be sure that you go back and look at that and make sure. I don't have my glasses on, y'all. I know that's bad, isn't it? That's so bad. I need to go back to the eye doctor, too. Same thing, whatever poof you start with, you're gonna use that same measurement all the way. You can use a yardstick for this, whatever you wanna use, but I have found that the width of this little stake is enough to hold it against the side of my cutting mat, which makes this process a little bit easier when you do these. Just discovered that. Maybe it will be helpful to you as well. So we're just going from the top in the center to the outside, in the center, to the outside, back to the center down here in the bottom. You see, easy. We're gonna turn it upside down and continue down the rest of the side. We're gonna start in the next available piece, make our poof and put it in there and lock it into place. That's easy enough, right? And what I am trying to accomplish with this is to make this look wider. That stake is only what we use to hold our pieces in place, right? So we're gonna establish the width of this by using the deco mesh. And you really won't notice that much of the deco mesh when you do your project. Okay, I'll tell y'all this too. This cream color deco mesh, I got at the thrift store. You can get it at Hobby Lobby, use a coupon, whatever you have to do to get it cheaper. Because the mesh that they have at Dollar Tree that's white has some iridescence in it. And I just didn't think it was appropriate for, for my taste in this project. So I, sent, I tend to kind of like the ones that are plain and they don't have all that glittery looking stuff in them. Just my choice though. Once you're back to your starting point, go ahead and cut it off. 
Now, I didn't show you this one, but here it is. This is a 10 inch piece of deco mesh. We're gonna do 16 inches and we're going to do three of these. We're gonna cut three pieces, 16 inches. And lo and behold, this was a scrap and I had just enough. Love it when that happens. I'm using up some of the things I already have in my stash. Okay, so there's our three little pieces here. I'm gonna put my wreath to the side or my swag to the side going to start on this piece by just making a couple of rolls, walk your fingers up, and turn that one also under. You can use clips if you need to. Um, these are called a woodland ruffle or a cripple. From the videos that I have seen, that's the terminology they use, so that's what we're going to go with. That's how I learned it. Looks sort of like a butterfly, doesn't it? Okay, so same process here. I know I got out of frame a little bit, but you're going to roll the sides and walk your fingers toward each other like that. You can flip them up instead of down if you want to, but because I'm adding a bunch of greenery here, I don't want anything extra to snag when I'm trying to place down the greenery. So these big pieces are only going to go down the single sections. We're going to do something else with the ones that are off to the sides. So the top, the middle, and the bottom will have a cruffle. And we're going to arrange them so that they look like a bow tie. So just have them going side to side. Okay. I didn't have any more of that one, so that's why I started using this one. We're going to use 16 inches of this thinner one. This one came from Hobby Lobby, and I got it on sale. So we're making little bows with this. Because we can't make a cruffle the same size, it would be tiny. But this will allow us to have a bigger piece. It looks like a bigger piece anyway. It's gonna make it wider, and that's what I want. So there's one off to the side. Show you one more time how to make another one. Walk it together, and there you go. Now you can just place that down right there. And I want these to kind of uh, go toward the middle and the side as well, rather than up and down, because I want it to be wider, right? Not bulkier, but wider. So we're going to do it to the sides. Same process right here. So you'll end up with four of those little bows. This is what it looks like once you've got it complete. You got your singles, and here are your doubles. You can go ahead and cut off what you have here. Now be sure that you've given it a good tight twist on all of them before you do this because you can't go back and correct it when you cut too much off. So I'm using some 26 gauge wire. Use whatever you like. This is just really easy to bend and it's already in, in you know cut into the right size pieces so I have plenty of room to feed them through the deco mesh and the, uh, the burlap looking um, stuff that we have there. Stuff. Boy that sounds professional doesn't it? burlap stuff. The ribbon, y'all. <laughs> the ribbon. So I'm just going to start off with my picks here and just fluff them out. They can be flat on the back, but kind of splay them out a little bit so that we make this, you know, give it some width. It's already got the height there, but we want to balance it a little bit with a wider width. I'm going to shape this into like a hairpin. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm just trying to get that right. Then I'll go from the bottom up through the middle and across those two pieces of greenery that I just placed down. This is going to hold it into place. I'm going to give it a good couple of twists and then we can twist out and flip out and flip out this greenery underneath to the sides without worrying that anything is going to fall apart. It is not going to fall apart. My baby breath happens to come on picks of three. They have, you know, when you cut them, they have three little pieces or three little bunches, I guess. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Rather than putting a bunch of little pieces in there, I'm just going to use the whole pick and just spread them apart. We're going to lay them right over the top of the other greenery, and we're going to take the same wires there and lock those into place so they're not going anywhere. If this is squished down tight in the center, that's totally okay because we're going to need a flat surface to put down the little sign that we got, right? So don't worry about that. You can squish it down tight in the middle. I want to add some more baby's breath because I just love the flyaway springy look that this gives. Really like that. Then I've got the willow and these are just some scraps I had from another project. I did a wreath not too long ago, an Easter wreath that turned out beautifully. It was so gorgeous. You know, some people say you shouldn't toot your own horn. But God gives me my gifts, and I'm giving him the glory. 
That's how it happens on my channel. Thank you, God. I appreciate it. I love my gift. And I'm so glad to share it with others, right? That's what we do. It's a gift. You share it, right? So we're going to have to have something to attach this down. This is metal. You want to use a strong, strong glue here. So Gorilla Glue did the trick for me, but just be careful when you are fastening it down because if you do fasten it down and it too tightly, it can pop off. We don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to feed those pipe cleaners through there and then loop it around on the back. Maybe you could add a little bit of super glue or something to there. So say you did add super glue or Gorilla Glue or something like that. It has to dry. Just hold something on top of it to hold it in place until that dries. So that's what I use my little conductors for. My little uh, electrical insulators, that's what I use them for. Y'all remember these things? They came on light poles. There were a bunch of different colors, but oh, I found these two blue ones at the thrift store and almost lost it, y'all. Have you ever just found something at a garage sale or a thrift store and you just clutch your, your chest and just want to collapse? Well, that's where I was when I found those. Oh, I'm a little silly this morning, y'all forgive me. Gotta laugh, don't we, though? We have to laugh. It shows that we have joy in our heart when we can laugh. And I sure do have some joy in my heart. And I appreciate y'all. Y'all put up with a lot from me. My shaky hands, saying words wrong, all those little things that they really just show you who I am. That's really me. I'm showing you who I really am. And if you like that and you stick around on this channel, it is very appreciated because I'm authentic and you're always going to get the same thing from me when it comes to that. Okay, so these beautiful daisies, they're so pretty. Um, these I picked out of a wedding, it looked like a wedding um, arrangement, maybe something a bridesmaid had. All kinds of beautiful flowers in it. I found it at the thrift store. I pulled that wax tape off of there, the floral tape, and scavenged for what I needed. I'm going to go back in and add more baby's breath, and I'm going to add some more of those pink wildflower looking things from Dollar Tree. You can get baby's breath. It's a little different, but you can get it at Dollar Tree. You can get daisies at Dollar Tree in a variety of colors right now. So maybe you don't want to do white. There's so many colors. I've seen coral. I have seen blue. I've seen purple, yellow, just a huge variety. So get them this spring if you think you might need them later. Go ahead and get them now. I've had some of these little roses left, so I'm going to stick those in there. I think that gives that, keeps that the feeling of the um, Victorian, that loose wildflower look, you know, what you would have in an English garden, things like that. That's kind of what it reminds me of. So we're going to take that original little ribbon hanger and we're going to use it as a hanger to go on the back of this. And we're going to hot glue it right onto the stick back there. And tuck it up underneath that wire if you need to. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. It's free. Next is an egg pedestal. Okay, so we're going to start with this little egg ornament. Got it at thrift store. You can get yours at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Going to use a little water. We're going to have some baby wipes. Um, brown paint. We have this little jar lid. Some paper flowers. These are so pretty. Some have writing, some are ruffled, some have a bead in the middle. It's just a big variety. And then we're going to find something for the center of our pedestal. And I'm going to use some lace trim. We'll of course start by taking off our tags. No mini purling around here. Take that off. And then decide what's the front, what's the back. I'm going to show you an idea of what you can use. So. Here's a variety. I'm checking it out to see what I might want to use in the center. I'm looking at the scale. I don't want anything overwhelming my egg. Can you guess which one I chose? All right, so I'm going to add some chocolate brown paint. We're just going to make a stain here. Very simple. Use whatever type of brown shade that you like for this. I like a darker shade when I am working with uh, vintage type looks. So we're going to take this. This is a wooden top now. This is a wooden top from a candle. Be sure that you clean it and get all the wax off. You don't want any wax. You don't want any soot. Scrub it off. Get it off. Dry it. And then you can start putting down your stain that you just made. And I love the color that this makes it. 
Putting it on with a baby wipe makes it so easy and it's easy to build up your um, the darkness or the richness of the shade. This is the little spool that I decided to use. I like that it is thinner in the middle and that it is wider toward the top where we will sit the egg and the bottom where it will rest on that lid. And it's the same process as we did on the lid. We're just gonna put it on here and we're going to wipe some off, get it as rich as you would like. And because we're not using antique wax, you don't have to worry about it not sticking to the glue. Let those dry and the color will change slightly when they're dry. We know we're gonna put this in the center, so here we go with this Gorilla Glue right around there and then I'm going to eyeball it. Y'all know I, I always refer to it as eyeballing. I don't measure very much here on this channel. You notice that, right? So what looks good to my eyes, good enough for me most, most cases. Okay, so now it is glued in place and we're gonna take some lace that was on that little spool. I got it at the thrift store, you can get lace anywhere. And if you don't wanna do this part, you don't have to, but if it's vintage and it's Victorian, you gotta have some lace on it. So I'm going to add a little piece of this here, right around the center, and then push it down, make sure there's no wrinkles and that you can't really notice the, the overlap very much. So I'm just gonna add a little glue where it's kind of lifted there, where I didn't get it all the way to the edge to make sure it's nice and smooth. So it almost looks like a band around it, okay? Now, once that is done, I'm going to add some glue, but I want to put it right toward the center because I don't want this to be seen when we squish the egg down. I don't want to make a big mess because we want this to have a high-end look, not cheap, right? So this is how it's going to look when it is in place. And we're going to just keep embellishing and adding because it's going to be pretty. These beautiful little flowers, you can probably get these at Hobby Lobby. Be sure you get them when they're on sale or clearance or something. I got these at the thrift store. I know y'all are sick of me saying that and some people still don't believe me, but I assure you that it is true. If I need to start doing some live videos with thrift store hauls, y'all please let me know. Cause if that interests you, I will do it. I love sharing my finds. I get so excited. I come home and if my daughter's here, my oldest daughter, I show her what I got. And I usually have things. So we're gonna continue around and I'm trying to kind of alternate which patterns or you know colors I have side by side. They're all this really pretty shade of blue which very closely resembles the color that's in the egg and the color in the little cup that we did. So these three pieces are going to work well together I, I think in my opinion. We're gonna leave that bow that's already on there and we're gonna work on this edge. I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that it has an edge on it and I'm going to put down some of these pearl sticker beads. You can definitely find something like this at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna go right around the edge because it looks like the perfect ledge to put it. Now it does have an adhesive back, but I wanna add some hot glue to make sure nothing comes off. I want this piece to last a long time because this piece will be going in my cabinet of the things that I do not ever break down or get rid of. And that's what it looks like. I would love it if you enjoy the content in this video, if you'll stick around by subscribing and hitting the notification bell because you don't want to miss it, right? We don't want to miss the things we love. And here are my joyous vintage Easter pieces that I know that you can do. Here is our beautiful swag with the little chick. Then we have a chick on our little cup here. I think the pieces work well together and I do think they look vintagey. I hope that you think so too. I hope that you came to the channel and you found some inspiration so that you can go and make something of your own. Here's the little chick on the egg pedestal. There's something about babies, baby animals of all sorts. They're just so precious. Here are those projects one last time together. I thank you so very much for stopping by and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye!